Today we're going to talk to you about sets of numbers, different kinds of numbers. First, we'll talk about the natural numbers. These are numbers that you use to count, the counting numbers. If we want to count, for instance, apples, one, two, three, or we want to count potatoes, we would start one, two, three, four, five. If we wanted to count all the pieces of produce on the counter, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are all the counting numbers. Numbers one, two, three, four, five, and so on. They go on forever. Notice all of these numbers are positive or greater than zero. And so what do we do with zero? That brings up another set of numbers. We add the natural numbers to the number zero and we have the set we can now call the whole numbers. All the natural numbers and zero make up the whole numbers. Instead of starting with one, we start with zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, and five, and so on to infinity. It goes on forever. Notice all of these numbers are non-negative. They're either greater than or equal to zero. That brings up another question. What do we do with the negative numbers? Now, when we take the whole numbers and add to it the set of negative numbers, we get the set of integers. These are all the positive and negative whole numbers and zero, or the whole numbers and the negative whole numbers. These are most likely what you thought of before when you heard the words whole numbers. All the positive and negative numbers whose decimal part is equal to zero. You can see from the list it goes on forever in the negative direction and forever in the positive direction. But this brings up yet another question. What about numbers that don't fit this pattern? Numbers in between 1 and 2, or 0 and 1, or any of the integers. These are fractions, and irreducible fractions are not integers. So now we need a set of numbers that includes all of those numbers in between, the whole numbers, the integers, and the natural numbers. We need a set of numbers that includes the fractions. These we're going to call the rational numbers. And we define a rational number as any number that can be written in the form a over b, where a and b are both integers. These numbers include negative 1 half, 5 over 1, 3 over 8, 15 over 7. We find fractions everywhere. A simple measuring cup contains fractions listed on the side. Recipes, fractions everywhere. Even a pack of Velveeta cheese has fractions on the outside of it. These rational numbers can be written also as terminating decimals sometimes. These are decimal numbers that end. They don't repeat forever. They don't continue forever. Rational numbers also include any number that can be written as a repeating decimal or a decimal that establishes a pattern that repeats over and over again an infinite number of times. So what about numbers that cannot be written as a terminating decimal or a repeating decimal? These form a set of irrational numbers. These are numbers whose decimal goes on forever but never establishes a pattern and never repeats. So any number that's not rational is an irrational number. It's any number that cannot be written in the form A over B where A and B are both integers. It's any number that cannot be written as a terminating or repeating decimal. These are the set of irrational numbers, some you're familiar with, like the number pi, used to calculate the circumference or the area of a circle. But some you may not know as irrational numbers. Things like the square root of 2, the square root of 3, the square root of 15. Any irreducible square root is also an irrational number. Another kind of irrational number that you may not recognize is a number that can be written as a decimal that establishes a pattern, but never a pattern that repeats an infinite number of times. Never a pattern that you can draw a bar over to show that this pattern is repeated over and over and over and over. 
So together, all of these sets of numbers, the natural numbers, the whole numbers, the integers, the rational numbers, and the irrational numbers make up what we know as the real numbers. These include numbers like negative one-half, three-fourths, five and one-fourth, all the positive and negative whole numbers, the integers, irrational numbers like pi square root of three, two square roots of five, seven square roots of twelve. All of these different kinds of numbers are included in the real numbers. Inside the rational numbers are contained the set of integers that we talked about earlier. And inside the set of integers contain the whole numbers. And inside those whole numbers are contained the natural numbers. And so we can see that every natural number is also a whole number, is also an integer, is also a rational number. And every whole number is also an integer and is also a rational number. And every integer is also a rational number. These are the types of numbers we're going to work with in an algebra class.